While Dr. Wilson Brian Key has been uncovering art in the world of advertising for decades, he was also the discoverer of the Bigalo Crucifix. The Bigalo Crucifix is on a seven foot piece of wood. It's tempura painted on wood of the Christ figure on the cross of the crucifixion. And in the abdomen of the Christ figure is this erect penis with testicles. And that's pretty good stuff for the 12th century because if the artist who remains anonymous had ever been caught, he would have ended his life on an Inquisition bonfire. The church and art, fine art, has used this kind of symbolism, not necessarily an erect penis, but, uh, throughout our history. It's a part of art. This figure of a mockery of Christ has utilized embedded imagery to subconsciously stimulate viewers for 700 years. Despite the great accomplishment of the Bigalo, it is no match for the incredible success of the famed San Damiano Crucifix. The San Damiano Crucifix is an extremely popular Christian symbol, and the story is not necessarily accurately told. Uh, it is essentially a, a cross that uh, St. Francis of Assisi uh, prayed to, and which he said spoke to him and essentially speaking to him, saying to rebuild my church, God saying rebuild my church. But there's some problems with this particular crucifix. Um, and it was reflective of what St. Uh, Francis did. He actually went out and rebuilt churches with like hammer and nails and fixed windows and roofs and these things. And God kind of let this go for a while. After all, saints, which well, wasn't a saint yet, but saints are people and people are flawed and we make mistakes, we sin, we say the wrong things, we do the wrong things. And St. Francis's big mistake was believing that this particular cross, this crucifix, spoke to him and told him something. Because there's a problem with it and the big problem is it is very much like the Begalo crucifix. Because it also has the underside of testicles and erection painted right in the abdomen of what is supposed to be Christ. In addition to that, Christ's eyes are open, his feet have blood coming out of them, how's he hanging on this cross? There are people to the left in boxes, there are people to the right in boxes, and it's supposedly showing a scene, but it's once again by an unknown Italian artist who wouldn't dare put his name on this particular painting because there would be repercussions should someone had consciously seen that particular uh, erection on the abdomen. St. Francis eventually got another message from God, which was, uh, rebuild my church, not the churches. You know, what are you doing? You made a mistake, not the physical churches. So the message, if any, that St. Francis of Assisi got from this particular cross was a false one, and people have to understand that. And if St. Francis, who is a man, again, and a flawed man, because saints are not perfect, although they try to achieve perfection, uh, made a huge mistake. A huge mistake, and I think that God lets this go because uh, it shows how human he was. So St. Francis was duped, he was fooled. This cross is a blasphemous cross. This cross is in the possession of millions of people, millions of people, and the Franciscans know of this story. When St. Francis died, the Clare nuns took it out of public view for 700 years, meaning they hid it for 700 years. Now, coming from a Catholic background, being Catholic educated, if anybody has ever been taught by nuns, you know that they're very smart. Sisters are very smart. And it doesn't take long for nuns to say, my goodness, this cross that St. Francis is praying to actually has an erection sitting on it. So as soon as he died, they took it out of public view. They didn't know what to do with it. They didn't know whether to destroy it, to burn it or whatever, because it apparently gave some kind of power from it. In Roman Catholicism, we don't pray to statues or to crosses. They don't talk to us. They're there strictly as reminders. And this is an example of how a saint, a great saint like St. Francis of Assisi, was fooled by this particular cross, so much so that he wasted a lot of time, energy, money in his mission of rebuilding actual physical churches. Instead of rebuilding the church, he misheard the message of Christ because he was transfixed on a cross that he was stimulated from and by. And since that cross came out again in 1957, displayed during Holy Week, the Vatican decides this is the time to bring this cross out, convinces the Clares to do so. It has been copied throughout the world. The hands of the saints near the erection gesture toward it as an introduction, as if they're actually speaking about it while holding variation phallic symbols of their own. Conscious perception can lead you in one direction 
and the subconscious can lead you in the opposite direction. They can operate independently or in a similar way. Uh, it's a part of the brain about which you know nothing at the conscious level, but which has an enormous effect upon your acceptance of cultural values, on your ability to, on your emotional uh, involvements. Uh, you would not be really human without your an unconscious mechanism. And as I say, this has never been, there's no part of your brain we can point at and say this is the unconscious. But it's something, the effects of which you can measure and you can observe and you can validate. The risk for the artist embedding images is that they can and will be found after conscious examination and with ease by the embed expert, rendering them as regular images into the conscious mind. In the center of the retina is a little a dense group of cells called the fovea, and it's a cluster. And this fovea moves in saccades. When you have the perception that you're seeing the whole scene, you're not. You're seeing point to point to point. Now, wherever this fovea hits, you're going to perceive what it's hitting in, your, in the eye, the object. It's reflecting uh, at a conscious level. So if you were to put something in that ad aimed at the unconscious, you would plant it off fovea. Now, the early studies of this were done with uh, billboard advertising. It's astonishing. I mean, these billboards, they, they work this thing out very scientifically. They're quite ex it's quite an expensive media. And then they came up with a machine called the pupilometer, which did the whole thing electronically and uh, made it very simple for any even relatively small advertising agency to test its ads with this. But it tracks what the, actual, the eye is actually striking. Uh, and perceiving at a cognitive or at the unconscious level. The brain is taking in all the information. I think in perception you have to assume it's instantaneous, operating, they say, at the speed of light. And it takes in everything. It's total. Everything goes into your brain.